Thank you, Dana, for that uh, wonderful introduction. And uh, uh, thank you for giving this opportunity um, to share my, uh, my piece of journey uh, with this group and uh, giving an opportunity for uh, me to be able to you know, address some of the questions that people usually have when they're just uh, entering a field, uh, whether it's a, a field that you're just entering or You've been in the field, and um, you know you, you're 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 having questions. You're 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 being challenged, and um, you know you just want to, uh, um, you know, you just want to share your question and uh, get some insights. So thank you for this opportunity. So um, just a quick introduction. Uh, you know, I've 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 had a flair for technology. I've I've loved computers ever since I got my first personal computer in 1995, uh, when I was still in school. Uh, computers were a, a, a novelty at that time. And um, I, I loved my floppy disks and, um, uh, you know, my black and white monitor. Uh, that was a luxury. Uh, when the mouse came out, you know, the mouse was a luxury as well. Um, so very fascinating. And, uh, my father was in his own business. He, he used to run a shop where he used to sell construction material. Um, and uh, when I graduated from high school, uh, that's what I presume that, you know, I would end up doing is, you know, helping my father, uh, you know, grow his business. So I, instead of engineering, I went into business management studies and, uh, you know, when I got back uh, after the studies and joined my father's business, I realized, uh, you know, things were things were not very straightforward. I was still new. I lacked any corporate experience, and uh, you know, somewhere in the bottom of my heart, you know, technology uh, thing was still ticking. Um, so, I decided to take uh, a complete U-turn and go back to study and uh, I enrolled in college. I did my master's in computer science and I did pretty well uh, in terms of my GPA and the ability to get uh, graduate and teaching assistantships all throughout. Um, and uh, also the benefit of having uh, landed a good internship at a financial services company. Um, and that internship along with an unpaid uh, gig I did for another technology company uh, that that laid the foundation for my um, technology journey uh, that was yet to come. Um, so just to cut it short, uh, you know, I did work as a, a lead engineer, as a project manager for you know a few years before I decided to go back uh, to my home country uh, for some personal circumstances and. Uh, that's when I decided to launch my own business, uh, again, a U-turn. And uh, I started a financial services company of my own. Uh, we grew it to 500 employees and uh, millions of dollars in revenues. So it was a very successful business. I exited that business in 2020, right uh, before the pandemic hit and got back to the US, uh, started my corporate journey again with a role at Wells Fargo. And here I am, you know, back to software engineering world and, uh, you know, talking with people who, uh, who are fascinated by uh, software engineering or who are thinking about getting technology. Um, so I, I do have, a, so just to summarize, I have a degree in, um, a graduate degree in business studies, a postgraduate in management and two masters in computer science and one in, um, uh, computer administration. So a lot of degrees um, and a lot of U-turns in my life, um, but I, I have enjoyed every bit of it. Uh, I don't regret any, any of the steps. Um, you know, it's just that uh, every turn I make, I, I get to learn new things. I get to explore new places and the new roles and it just keeps me going. You know, I, I don't um, you know, I, I like to be challenged. I like to solve problems. And, you know, the, these terms, you know, you know, make me stay at that path. So that's, that's a bit about myself. Uh, and, uh, you know, really want to, you know, have this uh, as an open session like Dana uh, talked about. So 
feel free at any time to unmute yourself, you know, ask any questions you want to talk about what situation you are in and where you want, want to go and uh, see if I can uh, share my insights. Great, thank you so much, Noor. Um, yeah, folks, if you're not feeling like you wanna unmute, you can put questions in the chat box, you can raise a hand, or you can just unmute and go ahead and uh, ask your question. While people are thinking about their questions, Noor, I know that we had come up with a couple topics to chat about. And I know one thing that's on everyone's mind right now is what makes a candidate stand out during interviews for software engineering positions. I know that as a manager of a team, um, you're probably doing some interviews, making decisions on who is joining the team. You know, what are you looking for these days? And and particularly if somebody doesn't have a degree in computer science, you know, what's some way that they could differentiate themselves from the candidates to have a positive edge? Yeah, sure. And, and thanks for reminding. That was one of the items that I did want to talk about. So uh, I, I've done numerous interviews uh, in the past uh, few years, uh, both uh, before the pandemic, during the pandemic, um, you know, since 2020, it's all been virtual. Uh, I've yet to interview in person, uh, you know, in the last, uh, since last three years. Um, so it, it changes uh, a few things, you know, when you're not in a one-on-one -on -one interview with someone, you know, at a physical location. So uh communication is the key uh whether it's software engineering or any any kind of role finance marketing uh, human resource um what i look for is communication and when i say communication it's not about you know being skilled at one language but you know having the ability to express your thoughts um you know and it's also not about being extrovert i'm an introvert by the way so I, you know, at any given opportunity, I would like to just, uh, you know, listen to what others are saying. And, uh, you know, I would deliver my thoughts in very uh, short, succinct messages. But uh, it doesn't mean that, um, you know, you should, uh, you should be worrying about, uh, uh, you know, how you communicate. So that that is one thing that I, I and, you know, whoever have, hired me in the past have expressed is, uh, you know, how good you can, how well you can communicate what, uh, what, what's your career ambition. Um, and then if you have a few projects or experiences in your resume, then you should be able to tell about it. You know, you should be able to uh, tell stories about what, what worked well, what didn't go well. I mean, you don't be shy about any mistakes you made or anything that you corrected or you improved uh, during one of your stints uh, in your resume. Um, you know, it's, it's very easy for someone in that interviewing position to really make out if some of your experiences are not, uh, you know, what you are talking about. So be honest about what you have in your resume. Uh, put things that you can really talk about and you can, you know, give concrete evidences of uh, what, what what you actually did uh, in those projects. So that's the first thing, communication, you know, express, uh, even if it's short, you know, be able to clearly express what, your, uh, what you did and what your ambitions are. The second thing is uh, your, your attitude. And, uh, you know, a lot of uh, times uh, come across people who, who really don't have a vision for themselves or, um, you know, who, who don't have a specific, um, you know, inkling on what they want to work in. Um, for example, you know, I, I currently lead uh, data engineering. So, uh, you know, that, that's the first thing I try to explore, you know, if, uh, for a potential candidate is, hey, what, what do you like in technology? You know, what do you like, uh, you know, if you, let's say if you're designing a website or if you're writing an application, what is the part that you enjoy the most? Um, and then, um, uh, you know, being able to communicate what uh, what your liking is. And even, even if you don't have a particular liking, let's say, you know, you, you, you like working on screens, you like working on data, it, nothing in particular, but if there's something that you would like to explore more than the others, you know, uh, definitely call it out. Either the job description says it all, you know, what the job is all about. And, 
if the job is about data, then show your um, interest in learning more about data, um, even if you like UI a lot. Uh, but if you're applying for a data position, you know, read up about data, you know, and um, and express your interest in in, um, in 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 taking up data. Um, the third uh, item is the ability to solve problems. Yeah. So. Uh, a lot of companies these days, uh, they're not looking for specific skills or a college degree, um, you know, in computer science or in math. Uh, what they're looking is uh, on top of your communication on your know, attitude, uh, you know, do you have a passion to solve problems? So the way it works is, uh, you know, some companies like to throw a, a puzzle you know, not related to technology, but, you know, just a general uh, puzzle in front of you. Um, sometimes it could be uh, um, a software problem which you have to express uh, a solution for in the form of an algorithm or in the form of just walking through the steps of how you would approach that problem. You know, even if you don't know that, that specific language or tool, you need to be able to communicate uh, how you approach solving a problem. That approach is more important than the solution itself uh, because that, that shows how you, um, you know, perform your own research, how you think and uh, you know, what, what goes on um, in your mind when you're thinking about uh, solving a problem. So those three are the top um, of my mind that uh, I, I would think um, you know, makes you stand out among other candidates uh, when you're applying for an interview. Great, thank you. That was such a thorough and helpful answer. Uh, just a follow-up question about that. I noticed that a lot of what you just spoke about, you know, communication is a soft skill, problem solving is a, like a computer science specific skill. It's just a general um, life and logic skill. It seems like these are all ways that you can stand out in the interview, but I know that many members of our community, just given the state of the market right now, are, are even just trying to get to the interview stage. What would you say, you know, is what is it that can get, you know, an, an entry level candidate to the interview stage itself? Do you think it's um, strong projects in their portfolio? Do you think that is contributions to open source? Does, is that, you know, some level of like internship experience, you know, what can somebody do to, to at least even get to the interview stage in a market that's flooded with candidates? It is true. Uh, it is a tough market right now. Uh, even Wells Fargo has a hiring freeze for this quarter. <clears throat> so, um, to get to that interview stage, um, you know, as you know, most of, uh, the bigger, companies have automation in place for resume screening before they even get to the desk of a, a human resource analyst to you know sift through so that machine learning that algorithm you know which scans the resume when as they come in uh, it, it looks for keywords in resumes so make sure um, you know, you don't do a cookie cutter resume for each position you're applying. Customize your resume to match your interests, uh, you know, and match it with what the job requires. Um, you know, you may not have done a project with that uh, requirement, but uh, at least, you know, expressing an interest and showing uh, some level of, um, uh, you know, uh, some level of interest um, and, and just uh, explaining that, um, you know, in a few bullets in the resume, I think that would cause the automated system to bring that resume up and, uh, you know, in front of some human, huge human resource analyst, who's then gonna screen it. Because if it doesn't reach the desk of an analyst, then that resume is, isn't going anywhere. It just keeps rotating within the system um, based on the keywords. So that's one. Um, if you don't have a degree, um, that that's that's not a huge issue. But you need, you know, you you can grab a, a good uh, certificate, you know, a short term certificate in few emerging technologies. You know, cloud is hot. Uh, anything to do with cloud, even if it's a basic cloud certification like AZ nine hundred for Azure or a Google Cloud Practitioner, a GCP, um, you know, get, get a basic cloud certification. 
um, they, they're not you know super expensive plus they don't require a lot of technical skills um, but they do demonstrate your understanding of the basic concepts um, and then you know you could also grab something in AI or machine learning um, or um, cryptography um, and, and, and any any keywords that companies are you know even companies like Wells Fargo, which are more traditional in, in the sense, you know, it's, it's a bank and uh, banks are known to be very traditional and slower to adapt to new technologies, you know, for the pure reason of safety first, you know, they don't want to take a risk uh, with their systems. So even those institutions are playing quite a bit on the leading technologies uh, like cloud computing, AI and machine learning. Um, you know, the companies are even moving to public cloud, you know, outside of their, uh, you know, private networks. So getting a, getting a certification, it, it's always helpful. Um, that, that, that shows that, you know, you, you're serious about your, uh, your, uh, you know, love for technology. Um, if you have projects, that's good. Um, you know, just bullet out key details of how you help and you know what 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 are the great things that you did in that project uh, did that result in improving a system uh, did that in, you know result in a job running faster or um, you know a, a you know team communications to be streamlined whatever it is you know it could be technology it could be non technology it could be financial you know any any thing that you added value to highlight that in, in your uh, project. And I think that that will bring that up in, uh, in front of uh, the hiring manager. Thank you so much. All right, we have some questions coming in. This is from Zen, the next viewer from Zen. The first is, how did you move up the ladder within the tech industry from intern to manager level? So, um, I mean, there's no clear path to it. Um, I would say um, I was just lucky to have really good managers myself and um, um, so that mentoring that you receive along the way you you emulate uh, your leaders you know you you see you work with a leader you work with your manager your manager's manager um, you emulate what qualities they display how they communicate um, to small things as, you know, how they draft their emails and uh, how they draft their presentations, how they communicate their thoughts across in a situation which could be pretty challenging. And that's how you, um, you know, as, as a way of assimilating those values from your leaders, you, you kind of, you know, on the background become a leader yourself. And a leader is not supposed to have a manager title always. You know, you could be an individual contributor and be a leader uh, at work. Um, so it's, if, if you're demonstrating those leadership skills, which means that you're taking that extra step to solve a problem that no one has asked you to solve at work, you're taking that extra step to let's say send the minutes out after a meeting when no one has asked you to do that. You know, you're taking that extra step to help out a colleague with a complex problem that uh, he hasn't reached out for, you know, if, if you have the time and the bandwidth. So, you know, um, go, going that extra mile and uh, showing that you care, um, you know, if, if there's, an issue you you would just not ignore and just move along as long as your work is done. I, I don't care about that issue. If your attitude is, hey, if there's a problem, I'm gonna solve it. Uh, if there is, um, if there is something in the organization which prevents, um, you know, uh, a process uh, from becoming effective, and you bring that up and you 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 take steps to solve that, you're you're a leader, and uh, that gets more recognition than just hard working on your own projects, uh, I would say. So that going that extra mile, uh, that that helps. Um, so when I was an intern, um, you know, at my first company, I was asked to do a lot of documentation and be present at uh, 
uh, training seminars where I was, you know, going through the documentation of a new project management tool that we had uh, brought in and training other project managers. I was an intern, I was training project managers. So I, I, I read up about that tool, you know, overnight and weekends just to make sure that when I show up to that training session, I, 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 I was, um, you know, I was speaking uh, with confidence. So that, that really caught the attention of uh, my future hiring manager who offered me a job even before I graduated from college um, from that company. So that's how I got noticed um, during my internship and during my journey as, as an analyst initially. Um, so just, you know, in, in addition to what work you're assigned, go that extra mile and seek challenges, seek problems that you're, uh, you can solve and you can demonstrate that uh, you can take that leadership step. Thank you. The next question is, any suggestions or advice for newcomers starting their first role? What are some do's and don'ts? <coughs> um, in the market that it is today, um, I would say that, uh, you know, a, a lot of times uh, you do have the option to be virtual. Um, but if you're just starting out, the face time with your colleagues and with your leaders is, is very important. Um, you know, even if you have the option to, you know, fully work remotely, if you do have the opportunity to go into the work, uh, into the office uh, a few days a week, please do go uh, connect, network with your peers, with your leaders. And, uh, you know, because that, that's what causes new ideas to emerge. That's what causes, um, you know, um, your, your, your paths to open up, um, to move to different roles, to move to different projects and, uh, you know, gets you the visibility that is very difficult when you're doing it all virtually. So that, that's something I would strongly advise. If you're just starting out, go to the office, you know, meet people, meet managers, meet your colleagues. Um, the other thing I would like to state is uh, always be on the lookout for learning opportunities. Um, if you're in a project where <clears throat> you see that, uh, you know, the team's using a variety of uh, different tools and techniques, but your specific assignment requires only uh, one, one technology, don't be afraid to venture out and learn the others uh, that are being used in a project. Um, that will make you stand out and uh, will really help you excel because then you become available as a resource for other work streams in your project. And um, that's how you get visibility. Thank you. Next question is, what are some of the discussions an, indi an individual should have or address during their manager, during their one-on-ones? Okay. So one-on-ones are really, a you know, meetings that are about you. Uh, a lot of people think that one-on-ones are a meeting, you know, where the manager wants to know uh, how, what's going on, but it's the other way around. It's about you bringing up what's, um, you know, what, what's going on with your role, uh, where you want to go, you know, yeah. seek feedback from your manager on your recent accomplishments or even, you know, your recent mistakes. Um, start your one-on-ones with, uh, you know, how's it going at work in terms of, uh, um, you know, are, are you challenged enough um, in your role? And, uh, you know, talk about where, you're, where you want to go, how you want to grow in the role, you know, what other things you want to explore. You know, maybe you're seeing um, another person in the team doing things that uh, you, you, you really like. You know, maybe use that as an opportunity to seek, hey, you know, can I shadow someone? You know, can I uh, get mentoring from someone? Um, so one-on-ones, if, and, and the other thing is, if you bring a problem to your one-on-one, -on -one, um, go, go with a possible solution, you know, speak about, hey, 
if I had the option, I would solve the problem this way. You, you, by doing that, you're making your manager, manager's life easy um, because you're, you're, you're coming up with not, a, not just a problem, but also a potential way that shows, you know, how you would approach uh, solving that problem. You know, it, it could, or it could not be a possible solution, but at least you, you're thinking about it. So that, 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 that counts a lot. Sorry about the background noise. Um, I see a lot of, uh, you know, uh, lawn moving equipment <laughs> around my property. Not a problem at all. Um, the next question is from Diana. How do you organize and prioritize your day? What tools or organizing principles do you use? That is one of my favorite things uh, and has helped me a lot uh, when I was creating my own business. Um, so I use Note taking applications a lot. Uh, on my personal computers, I use a, a tool called as Evernote. On my work computers, you know, it's all Microsoft, so I use OneNote. So OneNote is, and, and many of you may have used uh, these tools when you were you know, in college to take notes and organize your uh, assignments, et cetera. But I use them to organize my professional life. You know, I have sections for my daily planners, my weekly planners, my monthly planners. And then I do uh, make it a habit at the start of the day to look at my planner and see what's coming up, any important assignments or any reminders, any deadlines that I would like to take into account. Um, and also at the end of the day, I would fill up my planner with what I've uh, gathered during, you know, throughout the day. I have sections to organize uh, you know, important um, links, URLs, uh, anything that I hear in a meeting, if I, uh, you know, if that's a piece of information that I would like to, you know, um, keep, I would uh, also note those. So most of it's it's kind of like your mind map. So if you uh, ever want to go back and uh, look at what you uh, learned um, or what you captured, then it's it's always. Um, a great tool to go back to. Yeah. Uh, similarly, I organize my email uh, very well in terms of you know categorizing in uh, various um, folders and subfolders depending on the projects, depending on um, you know what category it is. You know, is it HR related? Is it uh, project related? Is it um, you know benefits? Is it uh, important um, deadline related? You know, it is is it compliance related? So the ability to organize your email, even email can be quite overwhelming in a work environment. You know, there, I, I get, you know, close to 100 to 200 emails every day. Um, some of those I have rules to auto uh, organize in different folders. And uh, some of them, I, I just manually uh, deal with them. Um, so, same thing for my personal uh, life. You know, I, I have everything organized in uh, Evernote. So that's one thing which helps. Um, keep your calendar very up to date. Um, if you have a specific task that you want to focus on, block your calendar for an hour, for half an hour, whatever time it takes to, you know, attack that, you know, turn on your do not disturb and just attack that. Otherwise, what happens is if you try, try to, you know, multitask too much and if you don't have your time blocked, then you get bombarded by, you know, pings and emails that distract you. And then at the end of the day, you, you don't feel anything accomplished. So focus, organize your information in notes and any tool that you like, uh, but, you know, all, you know, keep your information organized and then your email. Thank you. Sure. Thanks so much, Noor. I know another question that's on a lot of people's minds that I'll go ahead and ask is, what is your take on AI? Obviously, it seems like every week, ChatGPT gets stronger and stronger. Now it can generate photos. It can generate, you know, voice. It can um, start to read text. You know, it's, it's just doing more and more. Uh, of course, some people are doomsday about AI, saying it's going to take all of our jobs. Some people say it will enhance what we do by taking away the busy work and allow for creativity. Do you have any thoughts about that? Or I know you probably can't share necessarily what how you're preparing within Wells Fargo, but any like 
broad themes that you're kind of taking away from, from what your organization is doing or what you personally think about the coming AI revolution? Yeah. The one thing I about uh, I know about AI is it's it's making a few stocks go pretty crazy. <laughs> so if you have an AI in your uh, you know financial report, and if you're a company listed on the stock exchange, your your stock goes up. So, uh, but you know other than that, uh, we, we're we're in an interesting cycle in technology revolution uh, where everyone's talking about AI. Um, you know, you, you got to differentiate between uh, generative AI and, uh, you know, um, AI, which just helps you, um, you know, automate some things. Um, so generative AI is the, you know, ones that we have with uh, chat GPT and bots that can answer and generate content for you, you know, images, audio, video, um, stories, uh, emails, whatever it is. Um, to, to some extent, uh, it is something that a lot of big corporations are looking forward to um, and see how it can benefit in uh, delivering better services to their customers, you know, automate some mundane tasks and, uh, um, you know, and, and improve, improve the, um, the interconnections between systems that, you know, that are so complex in bigger organizations. So it, it is definitely something that holds value. Um, you know, personally, I, I haven't kept much up to date, but, um, you know, whenever I take my next time off, that's one thing I'm going to read up all about is uh, AI and even, you know, maybe learn a new technology that's going to help uh, me excel in my career at the bank. Great. Thank you so much. Another topic that we had talked about touching on was the value of internships and freelancing when starting out. Again, I know the market today is different than what it looked like when you were starting out, but obviously your internship was very helpful to you. What do you think is relevant about internships and freelancing, especially at a time like right now when there are more candidates than job openings while companies such as Wells Fargo and many others are um, continuing their hiring freezes? Yes. So as I said, uh, for me, a big milestone for my, uh, you know, break in the corporate world was an internship. So when I was still, um, you know, a student uh, doing my master's, I did apply to a number of internships, you know, both within the campus, you know, there were companies that set up stalls in my, um, you know, uh, you know, campus and both outside where I would, you know, swift through the job sites to look for internship opportunities. And, uh, you know, I did do in internships actually. Um, so one was a regular internship at a financial services company. Um, and the other one was, um, I wouldn't call it internship, but it was more like, uh, you know, doing uh, a lot of software development work for a startup company which did not have the money to pay me, uh, but that they, they did give me uh, a stake in the company. And uh, I used to work uh, 70 to 80 hours a week uh, between the two internships. Um, and, you know, at the end of uh, the year before I graduated, I had job offers from both of those places. I chose to go with the bigger company uh, just because I was just starting out. I didn't want to take a chance at the startup. Uh, but if you do uh, get an opportunity um, to be an intern, um, you know, be open to taking up any challenge that comes along your way. Um, you know, anything that uh, can increase your visibility uh, among the leadership team. Even Wells Fargo, we, we, in my team, I hired three people who were out of, uh, you know, programs that, um, you know, that there's a Grace Hopper program uh, that uh, helps, uh, you know, women in technology, you know, you know, develop careers in technology. They may be coming from any other background. So at a company level, you know, they do encourage uh, hiring from these programs um, where people are just starting out in technology. Um, so, you know, th those internships are very important. I mean, if you have a uh, 
a summer where you're light on courses or you don't want to take on courses, go ahead and grab some internships. If Even if you don't get a formal internship, uh, grab some freelancing opportunities on sites like, uh, you know, guru.com or, uh, you know, freelancer, uh, any of these sites, uh, you know, grab something, even if it doesn't pay well, uh, just build up your portfolio of work that you can demonstrate to a form, you know, a potential employer. Great advice. Thank you so much. Does anybody else have more questions for Nora? We have about 20 more minutes here. Any questions about working at Wells Fargo, about, um, you know, moving from software engineering to data engineering. Actually, that's a question that I have. I know that obviously data is the buzzword that we've all been hearing for a couple of years now. For those who have more of a background in software engineering, which is, I believe, what the majority of the candidates in the on-ramp community have, do you think there's value in exploring data engineering? Um, like, what are your thoughts on the viability of that as a career right now? And, and in terms of the viability of somebody making the switch from software engineering to data engineering, anything that you can share on that? Uh, so to be honest, I mean, I don't consider data engineering to be separate from software engineering. It's part of software engineering. Um, I, I just differentiate between data uh, because my focus is on data. Uh, but that doesn't make you less of a software engineer. Uh, it just makes you specialized in one domain, which is centered around data. What that means is, you know, how do I get data coming in from different uh, sources of information? How do I manage the storage of data? And how do I manage the outgoing data from my storage to whoever needs that, you know, for consumption? So that is what data engineering is all about. It's, it's part, very much a part of software engineering. So, you know, instead of uh, creating screens or creating APIs, you know, I'm focused on creating, um, you know, stores of data and uh, creating processes which uh, I use to ingest, egress, ingress, and also transform data uh, that is of use to the consumers that I'm um, doing those projects for. So, um, you know, you, you can specialize in data. Um, you know, you could, you could specialize in things like big data, Hadoop, um, um, you know, uh, big data for cloud. Um, Hortonworks uh, is, is one of the providers. Um, and, uh, you know, you could specialize that way, um, but you're still a software engineer. Uh, you just specialized yeah. in, in data. Thank you so much. Okay, we've got a few questions rolling in here. This is from Eric. Do you have any advice for returners, those like myself who were in the field and are now seeking re-entry? Yeah, I, I, I totally relate to that. So as I said, I, I went back from software engineering to running my own business and then uh, came back to software engineering. Um, when, you're you, when you want to return back, what matters most is how, not how much up-to-date you are with uh, the current technologies or languages, but um, do you still retain that, um, you know, uh, that problem-solving ability? You, do you still retain those software engineering fundamentals in your mind? If I know what a data structure is, I would not uh, forget that in life, you know, regardless of what career I am into. Um, I could forget the language which I use to create the data structure, but I would not, you know, forget the, uh, the, the concept or the logic of data uh, structures. So, you know, re-entry is not an issue at all. Um, you know, you just have to connect the dots. And, um, you know, when you're interviewing for a position and you're returning, um, highlight what you did in your software engineering roles in the past and then how you uh, see yourself, um, you know, interested in, or you know, um, your 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 willingness to advance in software engineering in your new role. Um, I think uh, companies do look for people with the right attitude and communication skills, regardless of you know whether they're um, you know continuing their journey or they're returning from a break uh, from software engineering. So it's 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 never too late. It's never too you're never too old. 
you're never too young or you know you, you could take a break and you could come back and uh, you know it's it still can work out thank you next question is from iol this is a great one can you recommend any tips for effective networking as a job seeker uh that is something that i challenged i i found myself you know challenged with <laughs> In my initial days, um, what 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 I do now is uh, I seek out uh, you know workshops. I seek out sessions. For example, tomorrow I am going to New York to be part of a session called as Inclusion Three Hundred and Sixty. I mean that has nothing to do with my job right now, but uh, it's meant for managers and individual contributors um, uh, to network with each other and. Um, promote ideas around how to, you know, uh, make inclusion a core, um, a core aspect of how we manage our teams and make sure that uh, we, we live up to those principles. So seek out opportunities where you get to interact with others in the form of uh, whether it's uh, training sessions or workshops or anything uh, where you get to see people, you know, whether it's your peers, your leaders or leaders from other areas, don't, don't be shy to go to those opportunities. Even if you're an introvert like me, uh, you will always find a reason to connect with people when you actually walk into those rooms. So that that's one way. Um, do go out to um, your town halls. Um, you know, I, I've seen people, you know, they, 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 they ignore going to town halls in the context of, hey, I'm busy with this project, but go to your town halls, whether it's your CTO or your manager or your, uh, your um, you know, head of department. If they have a town hall, do go to it, listen carefully. And at the end, you know, if, you're, you know, if there's an opportunity to ask questions, do raise your hand. Uh, if you see some, um, something where, where the presenter can, um, you know, answer something, uh, whether it's in the organization or some things outside the organization. So your visibility helps with your networking. Uh, so make yourself visible as, 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 at, at as many events as possible, virtual or in person. That's great advice, thank you. Um, next question is from Zim. Yeah, you've spoken a lot about, you know, staying educated, staying on top, of, on top of things. And of course, there's so much information coming in all the time. Technology is constantly changing. Do you have any good resources that you use to keep up with tech? Uh, so we... Looks like you're muted for some reason, Nora. Oh, I don't know how to have There you are. Okay, so um, uh, what I was saying was, uh, at, at, especially at Wells Fargo, we have tools like uh, Technology College, which is internal to Wells Fargo, where you have the opportunity to browse a lot of different topics that you want to learn about. You can subscribe to those. Um, but even then, um, you know, let's say if, you, if you're still in the market, if you're seeking out jobs, and if you want to you know, stay uh, ahead uh, of the technology curve, um, then um, you know, subscribe to some good sources on Twitter. Um, there are people who are you know, in the forefront. Uh, for example, in AI, uh, I, I do follow a few people who post about all the latest happenings in AI and that's what keeps me up to date on what's going on. Um, that's a very, uh, I would say, less intrusive way of uh, keeping up to date. Uh, subscribe to really good uh, sources of information. You know, people who are, um, you know, are, are you, you could trust, um, you know, um, uh, that's one source. And, um, you know, my, my other sources are, you know, my, my feeds on my Google homepage uh, because I do subscribe to interest in technology. It does automatically reflect uh, what's going on and uh, new trends in technology. I mean, gone are the days when I would get subscription to magazines uh, delivered to my uh, office or to my home. Uh, it's, it's, it's all, uh, you know, using social media and what you subscribe to on Twitter that uh, keeps you abreast uh, of what's, what's happening. 
I don't have any specific sources because these days I, I, I refer to our internal Wells Fargo technology building um, to stay updated. Um, but, uh, you know, Twitter and, uh, you know, news aggregators like Google or Microsoft uh, should be uh, good sources of keeping up to date. Thank you. The next question is from Edgar. Is there entry level for data engineering or does it require experience in software developing first? Uh, as I said, it's it's part of software engineering. So even if you're entry level, uh, you can enter uh, data engineering. Um, you just have to be passionate about data, you know, how you view data structures, how you view databases and, uh, you know, what, what kind of things you can do on data when you're ingesting data, when you're aggressing data, when you're transforming data in between. Um, just do, I mean, if, you, if you're if you familiar with some programming language, uh, do some interesting things with data. Um, you know, not just the usual Fibonacci series, you know, create a database, create uh, automated routines to transform your data uh, from one thing to the other and um, see how it plays out, you know. Can you, um, and, and I think if you do that on your own, if you learn that, if you put it on your resume, uh, I think you'll, you'll catch the eyes of someone who's uh, wanting to hire someone interested in data engineering. Thank you. Next question is from Mami. I am a career changer from IT support. I have done a full stack software um, development course. Any advice for me to prepare for an entry level job? So, uh, it, you know, I, 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 I tell that, uh, you know, do, do create some programs of your own. If you're a full stack engineer, then you can pretty much write your own UI, your API and a full stack application with the middleware, the database and the front end, all three of them, uh, create a few applications that you think can solve some problems in today's world. Uh, create a mobile application, for example, put those as projects on your resume um, and, and they will be, you know, I think helpful in, um, you know, getting filtered through the automated resume uh, screeners at most big companies um, because a resume with, uh, you know, projects, even if they're not projects that you've done at other companies, but you've done it yourself uh, to, to build something that solves a particular problem. If you created a website, if you created a portfolio um, and published it, if you contributed to open, open source project, um, then, you know, mention that. Um, and if you haven't, then, you know, find opportunities to contribute. Um, I think that will help uh, with your resume standing out. Thank you. Next question is from Desislava. If you had to pick just one, which of your formal degrees was the most beneficial to your career trajectory? Uh, give, give me just one minute. Okay. Uh, so my degree in computer science at the University of North Carolina was the most important one for me in my career trajectory. Um, just because it gave me an opportunity to learn um, so much across different technology stacks, right from the network, networking layer all the way up to the uh, you know, programming layer and uh, you know, uh, user-facing applications. Uh, it gave me a full 360 degree understanding of how software works, um, you know, not just uh, from a high level perspective, but, you know, being able to write binary code, uh, training a processor into doing some things that uh, you couldn't really do in a high level programming language like Java. Um, that, that program really created my base uh, that I still value today as my software engineering base. So, um, uh, my not to say that my other courses where I uh, learned management and business administration were not important, but uh, I think from my career perspective, uh, uh, my master's in computer science was the most uh, I, I would say beneficial uh, in terms of preparing me for software engineering. 
Thank you. Well, next question is also from Lysislava. Can you recommend a book or other resources to improve communication, especially to become more succinct? That's a great question. Okay. C could you could you repeat that question? Oh, I see that in the chat as well. Okay. Yeah. Can you recommend a book or other resources to improve communication, especially to become more succinct? <laughs> I, I really wish I had uh, the opportunity to read a book about that uh, or a resource. I mean, everything I've learned about, uh, you know, being good at communication, you, you know, even though if you're an introvert, um, is through, um, you know, articles that I've come across on the internet, um, through my social media feeds or through my Twitter feeds or, um, um, you know, through my other subscriptions. Um, but it, it's hard to tell, you know, a specific source. Um, I, I, I definitely don't know a book uh, that I've read. Uh, it's, it's, it's all through the articles and blogs and, you know, experiences and stories of other people that I have heard. And then uh, one other thing that I uh, mentioned early on was, um, you know, capturing the qualities of the leaders that you work with. So I did have leaders who knew how to cut short a sentence of, uh, you know, 10 lines into just two words or three words. Um, and uh, that, that helped me a lot uh, because I knew firsthand that I'm an introvert. I, I, I don't like to talk a lot. So, you know, if there's an opportunity to express something in a succinct way, uh, then that's that's better for me uh, personally. So I learned quite a few, uh, you know, quite a bit from that leader uh, in um, shaping up my email communications. Where I keep it, you know, to a line, to two lines, you know, whatever is essential to delivering that message without adding a lot of, uh, you know, uh, fluff. But uh, I, if, if I come across a good resource or book, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I would like to share it in the future, uh, definitely. Thank you so much. All right. Well, that is the end of our questions, and we are just about out of time. If anybody has one last question they'd like to ask, feel free to put it in the chat or unmute and go ahead and ask. But if not, Nora, I just want to say thank you so much for your time and for all of your thoughtful answers. It's so helpful to hear the take from somebody who has been in the industry in so many different ways. Um, and I think you've shared some really helpful advice. I hope you see everybody thanking you in the chat and understand that our community feels the same way. No, thank you so much uh, being patient with me and giving me this opportunity as a platform uh, to talk with you all. Um, it was great to hear some of the, you know, really smart questions that I, uh, you know, came across and the opportunity to answer them. I really hope that it, uh, it adds a little bit of value to what, uh, you know, you have uh, as, as your arsenal um, to grow your career, to enter uh, your career and uh, wishing everyone uh, all the best uh, in this challenging market. I think each, of, each one of you can do really, really well if you have the right attitude. Thank you so much, Noor. And thank you to everyone for being here, for taking the time to invest in yourself, your career, your future, and your community. This um, recording will be available within the OnRamp platform. If you don't have an account, you can make one easily with your email address, and you can see recordings of all of our past events there. Um, and until next time, thank you all so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day and a great week. Have a great week, everyone. Thank Bye, you. everyone.